On November 10, 2013, Typhoon Haiyan, the strongest typhoon ever recorded to hit land, smashed its way across the Philippines from east to west. It raised huge tidal waves where it hit the Philippines on the eastern side, but it crossed right across the country, leaving a tra trail of devastation behind it. When people emerged after the typhoon, they, their houses were flattened, their rice fields were destroyed, their bananas, their mangoes, all their food was gone, their coconuts had fallen down, they had no place to turn, so they went where desperate people always do, they turned to the sea for fish, and what they found was that the reefs had been devastated too, and there was the corals had been smashed to pieces in many places, there was hardly any coral left, and hardly any fish at all. Right after Typhoon Haiyan, Scott Countryman, the head of the Coral Triangle Conservancy, as soon as the water was clear, he went and he dived in his favorite dive sites across the Philippines to see how they had done. These were sites he'd photographed six months before. What he found was shocking. 80% or 90% or more of the corals had been smashed to pieces or overturned or damaged. And it was a horrible sight. The corals were sick and dying with diseases, bleach patches due to the high temperatures that had hit them before. Coral reefs of the Philippines shortly before Typhoon Haiyan hit them had been subject to a very severe high temperature bleaching event that had killed many of the corals. But even before that, Philippines reefs were in very poor condition. I'm Tom Garreau, president of the Global Coral Reef Alliance, and I've dived in every major island of the Philippines except for Samar and Leyte, the two islands that were first hit. And what we see all, almost everywhere in the Philippines is that about 99% of the corals are gone. There are only a few places that are still in prime condition. And the reason they've gone is because the fishermen dynamited with bombs. They poisoned it with cyanide. They used destructive harvesting methods. They cut down the trees on land and let the mud wash into the sea and bury reefs. They didn't treat their sewage. All of these things have been have wiped out about 99% of the coral reefs. And then earlier this year, global warming caused a severe high temperature event across the Philippines, and many of the corals died from bleaching. So when Scott went and dived in his favorite sites, it was a very sad picture that he saw. Luckily, Scott knew exactly what to do. Scott had been a student at the 8th Indonesian Bio-Rock Training Workshop the year before, where about a hundred students, mainly from all over the Philippines or Indonesia and other parts of the world, came in order to learn how to use low-voltage electrical currents in the dramatic new Bio-Rock technology method that allows us to keep coral reefs alive where they would die and grow them back in a few years where there's no natural restoration. In the Bio-Rock training workshop, the students learned how to design, build, install, monitor, maintain, and repair these structures and see the results for themselves. What these projects have done is that they greatly accelerate coral growth, survival, resistance to stress, and not only corals, all marine organisms, so that within a few years there are lush marine ecosystems where there had been barren areas before. If you can take a look at some of the photographs of our sites in Indonesia, where we have hundreds of projects, you'll see areas that have gone from being about 1% live coral cover and barren of fish to about a hundred, nearly 100% live coral cover with huge schools of fish in a few years. These projects have been so successful that last year in Rio de Janeiro in Brazil at the United Nations Conference on Sustainable Development, the Karang Lestari Coral Reef Restoration Projects in Pemutaran, Bali, which the Global Coral Reef Alliance has helped since the year 2000, was awarded the Equator Award for Community-Based Development, a top UN award for communities that develop novel methods to help themselves and improve their, their situation and their environment and their sustainability and way of life. In addition, the United Nations Development Program awarded the Karang Lestari Project the special award for oceans and coastal zone management. So this was, this, these methods that Scott had learned in Indonesia have received huge international award, but they're not being used in the Philippines to bring back reefs the way they are in Indonesia and restore fisheries in a few years. So that was what Scott immediately set in mind to do when he returned back from Indonesia to the Philippines.
On November 14, 2013, four days after Typhoon Haiyan, Scott finally was able to get to his own pilot Biorock projects that he set up immediately on his return to the Philippines from Indonesia. What he had done is he had gone to a marina where he had a catamaran covered with solar panels, and he moored them above a Biorock reef structure right below, and he took a few small fragments of broken corals that he found lying around in the mud and stuck them on it. And that was 11 months before. Now, after the typhoon, he was eager to see what had happened, and since he had already seen what had happened to his favorite reefs, he didn't expect to find anything remaining, because these structures were sitting in only two or three meters of water. What he saw absolutely amazed him. The pictures you're seeing here are not edited. These are the complete set of photographs taken four days after Typhoon Haiyan. And as you can see, the corals are not only intact, there's no signs of bleaching or disease or injury or fragmentation or anything else on these corals. They're, in fact, incredibly bright and shiny. They're branching like mad. They've got beautiful forms and shapes. And when you look at them close up, what's really astonishing is how they're forming new polyps and new branches at an incredible rate. And these new polyps, when you look close up, are so small, so new, so fine, that they must have grown within the last four days, that is to say, after the typhoon itself hit. They're absolutely remarkable, and what they show is that the electrical stimulation method, as we have long thought, helps corals heal and survive from physical damage to an extraordinary rate. This means that we can now restore coral reefs all across the Philippines that have been devastated and grow corals at the fastest possible rate and bring back fish habitat. What the Coral Triangle Conservancy and the Global Coral Reef Alliance are aiming to do is to set up coral arcs in community-managed and community-operated fish-protected no-fishing no zones. Every village will set up an area, grow corals, and restore their fish, and the spillover effect will result in many more fish in surrounding areas, as we have done in, the, in, the, in Indonesia repeatedly, and restored fisheries from villages that have lost them. So that's the goal of this project, is please help us, because we are going to begin in the Kalamianas Islands. That's the last area that was hit by Typhoon Haiyan. They were devastated. And since the last place to hit, they were also the last place to get aid. The whole focus was on the opposite end of the Philippines. It took nearly two weeks before Scott and the Coral Triangle Conservancy were able to get the first ten loads of food and relief supplies into the Kalamianos Islands, and they had received no help until then, after the typhoon. These are mostly extremely poor fishing villages on small islands. They're tribal people with ancient traditions, and they really want to grow back their reefs and manage their fisheries sustainably. So our goal is to begin in the Kalamianas Islands where Scott and the Coral Triangle Conservancy have strong local support, working with villages directly to build up their capability to grow back their reefs and manage them, and then to spread to other areas of the Philippines, in particular Palawan, the large island to the south, and other areas of the Philippines. Our goal is to save coral reefs as quickly as we can and save the people who depend on them for their way of life. Please support our efforts. Please donate to the Coral Arc program to save coral reefs after Typhoon Haiyan in the Philippines and to save the communities that rely on them. Please go to the Global Coral Reef Alliance website, www.globalcoral.org. And at the very bottom, there's a PayPal button. Please donate. What we will do then is we will be able, once we have funding, to go and start these projects immediately, working directly with community-based management groups. Thank you for your help.